The financial impacts from the water crisis from 2018 were uh, more than any hurricane or economic downturn that we've had to experience here in you know, our over 100 year history. So it was, it was scary. An algae crisis threatening our treasure coast. A cycle of despair and disgust amidst promises made and broken. Billions of gallons of water are rushing from Lake Okeechobee to our coastline. How much pollution is too much? How much danger is too much? How much before this will stop? The impact that we felt was substantial. Guests left, um, reservations canceled, cash flow evaporated, and you know it was everything I had I had in me to to keep my staff employed. Buyers just got up and left. Uh, the fish kill out here was just epic. I mean, there was not, uh, never ever been anything like it. It, it was extremely emotional. The manatee, the dolphin. I haven't been to the beach in over a year. The economic impacts of coronavirus on the state of Florida were disastrous. What happened? Restaurants couldn't open, lodging couldn't open, an end to a tourism season months before it was supposed to happen. Florida cannot weather that a second time in the year 2020 by having an end to a tourism season, nobody eating at restaurants and not utilizing lodging because there's toxic algal blooms that are discharged out into different communities. It takes both an emotional and a physical toll on you. Um, physically, because the, the, the stench that's in the air is heavy, it's thick, um, it, it smells of death. There are carcasses literally rotting, um, both in our waterways and on our beaches. Not only did I have to take that economic hit and move forward, but then also I'm thinking about, well, what about this coming summer? And, you know, you change your business model and your business mode to survival mode. I have a staff that I have to keep employed on a regular basis. And if I can't figure out how I'm going to redesign my company to take care of these gaps that these, the water concern has created economically, I've got a problem. When this event was going on in 2018, there, there was nobody on the streets, and, and that's not an exaggeration. There was literally no one in stores, um, there were no one in shops, there were no one in restaurants, and there was no one um, on the streets of Sanibel. The long-term outcome, if things don't change, is the Island Inn, you know, after 130 some odd years would have to close its doors. Let's think about some of the impact that coronavirus has had on our restaurants, being shut down for months. Places that normally lodge people that haven't been able to have a soul in those places, again, for months. Why did they do that? Because people can get sick from the spread of COVID-19. Those businesses will not be able to weather another period of shutdown because of toxic discharges. To try to fish through a toxic algae bloom and red tide like that is it's very challenging we need to fix all these problems what is different about the sickness that people get from toxic algal blooms from breathing in the airborne pathogens of toxic algal blooms i think we all have to look in the mirror regardless of what we do in life and ask ourselves what we can control and how we're going to do that in order to make the state of Florida a better place for everybody. We're looking for a balance that's going to provide opportunities for, for everybody to, to thrive and succeed here in South Florida um, because it's, it's a, it's a world-class fishing destination and it's, it's somewhere that we want to continue to see healthy estuaries and clean water. And when we ask ourselves that question, we realize that we can control the water that comes off an agricultural field just like we can control the water that comes off of a yard and the water that comes off of a golf course and the water that comes off of a roadway. We can control what feeds into Lake Okeechobee and whether that's clean or dirty water. And we can control whether we allow the water out of Lake Okeechobee to go out and destroy coastal estuaries on the east and west coast of Florida. And we can control whether we get enough water down to Florida Everglades and Florida Bay to make sure that they have the right levels that they need for good ecology. These are things that we can do actively 
but sometimes it involves making hard decisions, doing tough things that say, you know what? We're going to wish that everybody gets everything that they need, but we're not going to allow for one group or one community to be stepped on just so one group or one entity can get what they want to the detriment of the rest of the state of Florida. If we're putting our communities where the vast majority of, of Floridians live and, and, and spend their time, if we're putting that at the very bottom tier of the schedule, then we're doing a huge disservice you know, at the expense of a couple industries that are greatly benefiting. We're confident that things will start moving in the right direction and we just hope that, that these agencies responsible take a business look at how, you know, how can we fix this, what are our resources, how can we prioritize these projects that you know, scientists have been advocating for decades. I know that we can do it. We as Americans, we've come together to protect our communities from coronavirus. We've come together and say, how can we learn to assume that a surface is contaminated, to go out there and protect ourselves, to protect our ear, nose, and throat, to wash our hands, to sanitize our hands, to clean things out, to have better hygiene. We came together and we figured that out. We can do this as it relates to our waterways. We can figure out how to not allow toxic water into the Kissimmee. We can figure out how to not allow toxic water into Lake Okeechobee. We can figure out how to not allow toxic transfers of water from Lake Okeechobee to coastal estuaries. We can figure out how to get the right amount of water into Florida Everglades. We can figure out how to make sure that toxic water doesn't run off locally into our estuaries, whether it's on the east coast or west coast of Florida. These are things that we can figure out and we can fix. And when we all come together to get that done, we are going to bring ourselves to the cleanest Florida that the world has ever known.